Welcome to our YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Before we get started, we want to let you know of the ways to engage. So you can like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe. Your participation is going to help us get this message out to those who need it. So welcome to the FTC family, and we hope you enjoy today's message. The name of a message today is, please don't ask me to pray for you. And I know that's strange coming from a pastor because a pastor is a person that usually grandmas and pastors that are asked to pray for the people. And of course, I will pray for you anytime and in any situation, but I want to help you because sometimes one of the biggest and worst messages that we can give off to our unsaved friends and relatives is that we pray and pray and pray and pray and nothing happens. So that kind of demotes our God to just some imagination or religious figure in our lives. And I am going to use the book of James chapter 4, 1 through 10 as a backdrop to my comments. And the colder it gets, the shorter the sermon. James, if you, if you study it, 1 1, he's James 1 1, he's writing to the 12 tribes of Israel who were the dispersed early church of the book of Acts that some believe grew to over 80,000 people in a very short time. And then when the persecution came, they were dispersed all over the world. Hebrews writes to those people, James writes to those people, to the 12 tribes of Israel who were converted. Uh, with the Jesus name, baptism, Holy Spirit, and everything that we find in the book of Acts. But James is a very practical book. So maybe if you're praying and praying and praying and, and your kids don't change, or your body doesn't heal, or, or things, you know, maybe today I can answer some of those things. And be, he begins in verse um, uh, 1 of James 4. Listen, if I've ever asked you to listen to the word uh, carefully, every word, every line, do it this morning. Where do wars and fights come up from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasures that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet do no, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. And I looked up that word in Greek and that word in Greek is you ask sickly. You ask with disease. You ask evilly. You ask wrongly. You miss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulterers, and that's not necessarily the act of marriage infidelity. Infidelity is just people who love the world more than God. Do you not know? Listen to this. This is the Word of God. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? You can't be friends with one and the other. You have to choose. I'm either a friend of God or a friend of the world. Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but He gives more grace? Therefore, He says, God, He, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy into gloom, that, gloom that's repentance. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Let me ask you a question, and then let me ruin your lunch, okay? Here I go. Do you think... Do you think that our almighty, powerful God can heal this mouth? Do you think that the Christ that rose from the dead, do you think that the God that split the sea, do you think the God that made it rain bread from heaven, that God, that God that created, do you think that that God can heal this mouth? Well, of course he can. He can do anything. Do you think that he will? I don't think so. I don't think so 
Now, he may, you know, that God can do whatever he wants. This represents negligence, lack of care, unless it's a disease that came from Mars that we don't know about. Somebody didn't brush and floss. That's all there is to it. And so this person, whose mother told him to brush and floss, he didn't. His wife told him brush and blush. Uh, no, <laughs> brush and floss. Well, his girlfriend told him, and then she left him because of this, and then ten others. Finally, some lady had mercy and married him, and she's begging. And he. And he, this is the result of negligence. Take that off before they start getting sick. I want to talk to you about, quickly here, four reasons why you shouldn't ask me to pray for you. And again, I will pray for you, but I'm just making that title so you can go, oh, what did he preach? Are you not going to pray for us, Pastor? I'm not going to pray for you. Oh, man, I don't believe it. I'm in a move of church. You know, don't say that. I will pray for you. But number one, and that's not going to come on the screen, so just listen. Number one, don't ask me to pray for you if you don't pray for you. Some of us, we want everybody else to be praying for us. We want everyone else, because prayer is work. Prayer is ministry. Prayer is a delight at some point. But this flesh of mine, where do your wars come? Where do you, they come from your lust. We are a walking civil war all the time. I don't want to get up and pray at five in the morning. Some of you connect at six in the morning and others, now you will have the opportunity, those that can't get up early, eight o'clock, starting tomorrow. 8 o'clock in the evening. All the, all, the, all the ones who love to sleep in, you can pray with us. But you're asking everybody to pray for you, and you don't pray for you. That's quick. That's easy. I don't have to get too much into that. Number two, illnesses. Pray for me. I'm sick. I will pray for you, but don't ask me to pray for you if you do not eat right. I learned this very early in my pastorship when I was called out at two in the morning to go pray for somebody because my husband has demons. Pastor, he's making grunt noise and all kinds of stuff, and I think he's got a bad spirit. So as a, as a young, inexperienced pastor, I drive out there all the way from Miraloma to, I'm not going to tell you where, but it wasn't far from here. And I get it, I said, where's the, where's the, I'm, I had oil, you know, an, an Old Testament and a New Testament and, and a commentary. <laughs> I, I was ready, man. I had my bag with me and we're just going to excise this demon. And as I walk by the table, there's about seven boxes of pepperoni, empty boxes of pizza. And I walk in there, I said, this isn't a bad spirit. This guy had too much pizza, and it's the pepperoni from hell that is affecting him. I'm getting out of here before it starts smelling funny here. And I said a quick prayer, and I left. And you know, sometimes we want people to pray for us. We won't exercise. We won't eat right. We'll have too much sugar. Pray for my diabetes, brother. And you had half a dozen of yum-yums. That's not prayer. That's just common sense. It, it's a matter of just because we're Christians doesn't mean that we don't take care of ourselves. We Just like it's hard to get up and pray, it's hard to take a walk. It's hard to go to the gym. It's hard to, to take care of yourself. So take care of yourself. All right? That's number two. I'm already on number three, and you guys aren't ready stiff yet. You're not even stiff yet. Number three. This one's going to hurt a little bit. Don't ask me to pray for your rebellious children if you enable them. Don't ask me to intercede and to pray and to call out for God if you enable them, if you allow them to do things, if you do not restrain them. If you have a Bible, it's not going to come out here. 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 13, uh, Paul, uh, God tells Samuel to give the message to Eli. He says, I'm going to judge his family with a judgment he knows about because of the things that they have been doing. They have become vile and he has not restrained them. So I get tons, and, and, and we will pray. Send in, your, send in your prayer request, but intelligent prayer request. I know the people that sometimes are asking for prayer, and I know that they've enabled their kids since they were young. They, you know, you don't want to go to church. Now, of course, you have to deal with your children in every phase of their life. You're not going to treat a 
a 13 like you treat a three-year-old, a three and you're not going to treat a 23-year-old like you, like you treat a 13. So I'm not talking about the method. A three-year-old that doesn't come to church, you lift the arm, you spank, you get in the car, you buckle in, and you bring to the altar and pray them through. All right, a 13-year-old, it's a little different because, you know, and you have to, you have to be wise. So when, when does a parent intelligently back off and just put the Isaac on the altar? Well, you have to know those things. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when, well, let me tell you this. When you allow your child to bring beer and liquor into your refrigerator because it's going to get hot for mijo. Well, then don't come tell me to pray for him when he's an alcoholic. When you allow your, your 17 and 18 year old daughter or son to court, to go around with, to have a boyfriend or girlfriend, not in church, you let them go to the parties where they're smoking dope, you let them go to the dances, you let them dress the way they dress in the world, and then you want me to pray for them? I know there's not going to be any hallelujahs in amen. You're too cold to say hallelujah. I get it. In fact, I ordered this weather just for you. And, and you know, they're, they're, when you have a rebellious child, and we all, we've all had them or were them, what do you do? You remember there's a four-step process. When, when you have just somebody that doesn't listen, you screamed, they didn't listen. You wept, they don't listen. You stayed silent, they didn't listen. You prayed, nothing happened. A and you threatened, and you took away their cell phone, or their car keys, or, you know, their vacation. You've done everything, and then you go to the other extreme, and you give them everything, and say, okay, maybe I need to be nicer. Maybe I need to be a little more. No, get this. If you're going through, if you're not a parent yet, write this down, you know, file this message away you're going to need it if you're a grandpa give counsel to your to your married children okay um number one when you have problems with a teenager or a child number ones the first thing you do is to sanctify yourself john 17 19 for they for their sakes i sanctify myself that they may be sanctified in your word so you analyze your life what am i doing wrong you know, pastor, my, my kid doesn't want to come to church anymore. Did you talk about the church, the pastor, the choir, the singer, the pastor's wife, and everybody else while your children were growing up on the way home? There's negative commentary, and then those children are in the back. Yeah, they're playing games, but they're also listening to you. So all of a sudden, church is a bad place. They're the hypocrites there. That pastor, all he wants is money. You see, you repeat that 13, 14, 15 years. Don't be amazed why your children no longer want to come to hear the pastor, to greet the wife, to mingle with the people, to come to the altar. Because they're all hypocrites. Isn't that what you said for 10 years? So you, you sanctify yourself. In other words, um, this is a tough one. Get ready here. You're even going to take your jackets off when I say this one. Rebellious. When you have a rebellious child, analyze, investigate, take inventory of yourself. Because rebellion in teenagers is many times hidden rebellion in the parents. You learn how to hide it. You learn how to mask it without that, the, the real mask. You learn how to say, praise the Lord, everything's fine. Oh, I'm blessed. But there's rebellion in my heart. Our kids can't help it. They can't hide it. And many times, you know, in this church and everywhere, Pastor, my daughter doesn't want to go. Well, you know what? She doesn't want to submit to you or to the Lord because you didn't even want to submit to any ministry at the church either. You don't want anybody to tell you what to do. So why should she want someone to tell her what to do, even if it's her parent? Do you understand what I mean? So don't ask me to pray for you. Some of you have spiritual teeth like that in the spirit. Okay? You haven't flossed. You haven't brushed. You haven't taken care. You haven't got to the dentist. You haven't got a deep clean. You don't do any of that. And then you don't, you don't know why your mouth is stinking. Then you don't know why your family is stinking. Maybe... It was that you did not sanctify yourself. And we all make mistakes. Hey, if you're there right now, it's a good time right now. Lord, I ask you to forgive me, Lord. I, I wasn't what I was supposed to be for 10 years, for 12 years. It's going to catch up, church. It catches up to you. Let me tell you, it catches up. You can't hide from this. You, this is the way of God. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Whatever you plant is going to pop up. You cannot, like one man did, you know, he planted, uh, um, what was it, squash. 
squash. He, you know, just squash, squash, squash. And then he said, my God is big enough. He fasted and prayed. He said, I want watermelons to come out of those squash plants. And he fasted 21 days, prayer, and, uh, you know, intercede, all night vigils, praying, God, you are, you are powerful. You are wonderful. And you know get what came out? Squash. Because it doesn't matter how much you pray or how much I pray. If it, I'm going to reap what I sow, what I plant. I'm going to sow what I reap. If I plant strawberries, I'm going to get strawberries. If I plant apples, I'm going to plant apples. If you plant rebellion, if you plant lukewarmness, if you're lukewarm, or, or me, okay, I include us all. Okay, I'm not being mean saying you, you, you. If we plant a lukewarm Christian life, don't be, um, it, don't be surprised. That our children, look, our children will do in excess what we permit in moderation. What you permit in moderation. Well, you know what? I don't think, I don't think it, we need to do that much. And I don't think we need to not wear this. And I don't think we need to, you know, I don't really, you do that. You, you give that off in your family. Don't be surprised. With, they don't want nothing to do with honesty, with conduct, with morality, with shamefacedness. Don't be surprised because that was in you or in me. Okay? You are no longer cold. <laughs> Sanctify yourself. Then you put that, that situation on the altar. That's called the Isaac prayer. God asked Abraham for Isaac. Isaac means laughter. And you will have times in your life when God will ask you for your laughter. When you have a rebellious children, hey, we're, I'm sitting there yesterday installing my son as a pam, campus pastor in Phoenix, Arizona, and in my mind are the times that he made me cry. In my mind are times when I'm, I was, I don't know what year it was, I don't even remember, it don't matter the year, I was considering resigning to this church. I was on the board of the assembly. I was considering resigning to my board position of the assembly because if I can't take, the Bible says, if I can't take care of my own family, what am I going to do over here taking care of the church of God? And I was close to resigning because I just couldn't get along with my son. He was giving us problems. In fact, he gave me one big problem in Phoenix. God has a sense of humor. And I'm sitting there praying for him yesterday and saying, wow, God, you are wonderful. And so we, Rachel and I had to take that situation. And you say, what did he do? Oh, he was just being a rebellious 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 years. <laughs> he, was just, he was just being, yeah. Listen, let me, let me just talk real stuff here, okay? All right. There's a lot of homosexuality creeping into the, it's in the community, it's, it's being applauded by the government. In fact, they want, they want your kids who, I think I read a, a, a report that only 1% of the population even wants to consider transgenderism. And they're making laws and they're, they're putting money j just for that 1%. It's just there against God and His Word. And, and homosexuality, you know, it's creeping in. So I, I get calls all the time. You know, my, my, my son, my, you know, well, you love your son, you love your daughter, but you do not participate in the sin. If, you're, if your son or daughter smokes marijuana, you love, you love the kids, but you don't love the marijuana, unless you've you got problems. And so what you have to do with a situation you don't, you don't argue anymore, you don't fight anymore. You, what you do is you take the whole situation and like Abraham, you put your Isaac on the altar. And there are times of weeping. I remember a ministry was born here at this church. It was called Restore the Joy. Because Rachel and I were so out of joy because of that situation. In fact, Sammy now, my son, when he hears me preach this sermon, he wants royalties and commission. He goes, Dad, you're the one. If you get anything off of YouTube, I need, a, I need a, some of that because that's, gets, you know, that was my life. I said, get out of here or, or, or else. And we couldn't, we couldn't sleep. And we couldn't enjoy a dinner. Because when your kids are giving you problems, man, there's nothing. There's nothing like that. And so what you do is you put them on the altar. You do not fight. You do not argue. You do not. Now, you do not enable them either. You've got to stand there. Sometimes somebody has to stand there and say, no, no, that word, uh, Missy and Sam with your kids, and you, that word doesn't come into us. Where'd you learn it? Before it was at the neighbor. Now it's through your very iPad that you're learning it. 
That word doesn't come you. You know, we, we don't do that. That friend doesn't come here. That girlfriend doesn't come here. Half naked? No. That poster. You're 13 years old and you've got posters of naked ladies all over the walls. I mean, what well, he likes that. Well, so do I. I'm glad my wife's laughing. Or, or am I, let's be honest. You know, and you got all kinds of dirty posters there and half naked, and then you don't understand why your kid's in pornography at 17. And, 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 and you know, why he has problems with masturbation all his life and all that stuff. So let's get real this morning. Come on. You need, to, you need to not enable them. And I've said the story, I said again, in this church, a brother comes into me. He says, 14 year old boy, I believe, he put a skull on the door of his room, and he, you know, all these ugly stuff, and then do not enter. So the father comes and said, brother, I don't know. He doesn't want my wife to go in there. And, you know, should I take that off the door? And I said, no, brother, don't do that. I said, that's what I thought. Take off the door, dummy. Who pays the rent? Who pays the bill? And you've got a 15-year-old, you know, person going through problems, and, and you're being manipulated by them. Stand firm. Put them on the altar. And then the third thing you're going to do, you're going to pray the terror and the conviction and, and, and the fear of the Lord over them. My goodness, when, when a parent begins to pray the fear of the Lord, now there I will help you pray. I love to pray. What's his name and what is he doing? Well, he's, you know, he, he's already sexually out active and he's 14 you know pray i'll pray man i love those prayers say what's his name ready aim fire lord get him get him you know why because i was on the other side of that prayer when i was young and i heard my father pray for me one day saying this i went through a little rebellious time you know it was just you know it was a cute thing it was just me and here's my dad's prayer Lord, if he's not going to serve you, kill him. He wasn't playing. He says, I would rather see him, and I'm six feet away, socially, dis spiritually distance. He said, I'd rather see him in a coffin. I'd rather see him dead and go to heaven than be lost in this world. You know what I did? Man, I, I shaped up real fast. Like, I'm talking from there to the car. Because I was like, I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to go to church. I'm mad. I'm not going to go to church. I said, okay. He prayed that prayer. They left. Man, I'm right behind them. You could see the. I didn't want to lose the taillights. I said, the rapture comes and I'm dead here. And then you ask, number four, you ask God to restore your joy. So number one, don't ask me to pray for you if um, you don't pray for yourself. Don't ask me to pray for your health if you don't take care of yourself, if you don't exercise, if you eat wrong and all that stuff. Three, don't ask me to pray for your rebellious children if you are enabling them, if you do not um, rest restrain them from their vileness. Don't buy them things that are going to conduce them. I am amazed at how often and how long you allow your kids to play on those things and you don't even know what they're doing, what they're watching. It's amazing. The devil is in the tablet. <laughs> Not always. I know there's cute little cartoons, but even the subliminal messages they receive. And where are the parents? I know what they're doing. They're doing nothing, and then they're going to come and ask me to pray for them 10 years later because my kid's in pornography, my kid's in drugs, my kid's are sexually active, and all of those things. Number four, and the last one now, don't ask me to pray for you, for your finances. If you don't follow the biblical principles to administer those finances, brother, pray for me. Pray for me. I, I need a job. Pray that I get a job. What time did you get up? Well, about 11.30ish, I had my first cup of coffee. Okay, and you want me to pray? Before it was hit the streets. Now it's, it's not even, you can do it in your pajamas. Hit the keyboard. Put resumes out all over the world. And you'll get a job. Everybody has a job. Sometimes we don't, but sometimes we do. But you, you get one. You, you hustle. Don't ask me to pray for your finances if you are not going to be uh, generous with your money. The, what did we read here? You ask, but all you want is for, for you to spend on your own pleasures. Don't ask 
for good finances if, if, if you're going to violate the scriptures of, of remembering the widows, of helping the poor, of giving to others, of using your money wisely, of, of investing, of saving, uh, of looking around. Learn this, and I'm almost finished here. In fact, the piano guy can come up. <laughs> the piano guy. I, I'm like Biden with... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the piano guy. So, could you bring my hand out of what I did with this? Thank you. Anybody having a good time this morning? Are you learning something this morning? You see, because we pray and pray and pray and we pray amiss and we don't receive it because we're not doing... Check my pockets. No, no. It's all right. I'm good. I don't know. Thank you, Bobby. You're good. All right. Okay. Oh, no, that's a mask. Thank you. Thank you. I know what Bobby's saying. Don't ask me to bring you a hanky if I already gave you one. You know, I, he's making his own sermon today. No, this, this, is, this is real here. This is real. Before you ask for prayer, analyze yourself. And, and in this, look, here's, here's my 38 years of experience, okay, in just one capsule here. I have prayed for people, for them to get the right school, pastor pray, the school, everything. There. And then God blesses them. And you know what they do? They forget about God. They completely forget about God. God's blessing me. And it's all about my car, my vacation, my house. My... Now use it. Bless you. Uh, enjoy what God gives you. But don't forget about the poor. Don't forget about what you were 20 years ago. I've had so many people go by. And uh, you know, now they're blessed. Now they're business owners. Now God... And then, you know, we're too small for them now. They, they, they're on another level. And you little Mexican half-breeds here, you know, you're not good for me. I, 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 don't, I don't drive that car. I don't live that house. And I'll say, what's wrong with you? And this whole passage we read is about pride. You see, I'll finish with this. It says, have you seen anybody um, pray like a crazy person? Uh, you saw the movie, uh, the, the prayer room or the, what's, what's that movie with it? The war room, okay? That, that's like, that's good. I, I should have brought a clip. She's all just whack. Just, you know, I, that, that's awesome. I wish I could pray like that. But you see people praying that way, and it doesn't work. Oh, God! And, the, you know, the, the stronger you pronounce the D, the more angels he's going to send. Or God, da. Nothing happens. Because you don't read the first part of that verse that we read. It says, it says, resist the devil, and he will flee. So we're, okay, devil. You're going to run from me. And the devil's standing in front of you laughing. So who's wrong? What's going on? The word is wrong. No, you forgot to read the first part. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. Then he will flee. He's not going any place. He's going to laugh at you. It doesn't matter how many tongues you speak at him. If you don't submit yourself. So the secret here in James chapter 4 verses 1 through 10, th there's a lot of secrets there. Submit, then he will resist. And, and then when you submit to God, what does that mean? I'm sub no, you submit to a ministry. You submit to a pastor. You submit to a father. You submit to a grandfather. You, kids, you submit to your parents. Okay? You're going to ask the devil to flee one way. One day when your friend over there puts some powder in your drink and you're going crazy. And, and now you're calling grandpa. And now you're calling daddy. And you're all this. Well, you want the devil to flee, but you don't want to submit. Submit, and then he will flee from you. All right? Well, I know this is like not an outdoor, let's have a hallelujah, but, but I needed to, to deliver this word for you so that your spiritual life will not look like those teeth. You just floss every day, pray every day, brush every day, get some deep cleansing sometimes in, in fastings and, and try to submit to God in all you can. And you watch God act on your behalf. Let us stand, please. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Well, I know. I want to I want to keep make this clear. Pastor, did you say you're going to pray or not? I, I didn't get it. <laughs> of course, I'll pray for you. But help me. Help me. All right. And everybody today, when you're brushing and flossing your tree, your teeth, you're going to remember this message because hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. And do that with your spiritual life and you'll see God work wonders in your life. All right, let's all raise our hands and praise the Lord, shall we?
Thanks for watching. Your support is helping this channel stay updated. If you haven't already, we want to invite you to subscribe. And we want to thank you for your giving. Your giving has helped FTC reach the world. If you'd like to give today, please see the link in our description. Thanks again for watching.